I can get used to this. Me too. Experience more with $100 credit at hundreds of hotels from Chase Sapphire Reserve. Chase, make more of what's yours. Uh, my name is Tracy Brown. I'm a reporter at the LA Times, and thank you for joining me today at LA Times Talks at Sundance for our panel with the crew from Passages. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Pleasure. <laughs> um, I think we should just start right in. Um, Ira, uh, I'm not sure if anyone's, everyone's seen the movie, so really quick, can you really quickly tell us in your own words what the movie is about, but also, you know, tell us a little bit about like the seed that the of inspiration that turned into Passages. Sure. Um, the film is about a couple, played by these two wonderful men, who have been in a relationship marriage for a good while. And the um, effects of, a, of an affair that this guy has with a woman, played by Adele X. Arcopoulos, um, on the triangle, on all three of the members of this love um, Confusion, let's say. So it's a it's a it's a drama about intimacy and need and desire and sex and love and difference and being human, let's say. Uh, can you can you tell us a little bit about um, like what was what was your inspiration for this movie? I, like I, th I think for me, I, you know, um, the lockdown, the pandemic, the time which was so. Um, isolating for, for me um, in, in different ways emotionally and I, I really felt a craving for a kind of cin cinema and an experience in cinema that was intimate and rich and connected. So I wanted to write something which was um, that kind of movie which was about how people are together in the most intimate ways because I really hungered for intimacy. And um, I, I saw a film called The the Innocent, which is the last film of, of Visconti. And I um, saw in that film the kind of power of the triangle, the love triangle, as a, as a genre, you might say. And, and so my co-writer Mauricio Zacharias and I set out to write a love triangle um, that was about people that we kind of knew and kind of didn't know. So like, he plays a director, so. Here we are, is certain like parallels, but also there was um, the the kind of uh, the suspense in the film is really an emotional kind of suspense, and I think that was really fun. We wanted to make a movie. It's a realistic film, but we wanted to make something in which you never really knew what was going to happen, and who wanted what and when, and somehow the lack of being able to fulfill these certain things propelled these characters in a way that is very, um, I think it's cinematic. Like it's, a, it's, 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 movi it's, a, it's movie making, if that makes sense. Definitely. Um, Perfrance and Ben, uh, what, what do you remember about like your first impressions from reading the script and what did you respond to about each of your characters, especially uh, like Franz, Thomas isn't, not that every movie needs to be about a likable person. You know, he's someone that's hard to root for. <laughs> yeah, um, I like him. Uh, <laughs> I think he's a very interesting man, and his decisions seem to be very selfish, uh, sometimes egocentric, but I think it can be so frustrating to always embody characters that do the right thing, because the world that is divided into right and wrong is pretty dark to me and uh, human beings that are longing for love and relation and relating to the world they live in, I think they have to struggle and they have to fail to a certain extent. So for me, there's a certain beauty in failing and also surrendering to this failure that I am or that this character might be, but I don't see him as a failure. I see him as someone that is looking for very good things in life uh, as everybody else. So. Uh, I saw that in the script right away, and I knew this kind of quality from Ira's work. So, yeah, I think it was inspire inspiring to me, f like, from the first minute. 
and then when I knew that uh, Ben is in the project as well, um, yeah, I, I, I think I, I was pretty excited. I knew that it's going to be hard sometimes uh, to, to justify Thomas' action and to defend him as a person, but I think if you're longing for likable people, uh, yeah, maybe you need to go and see other movies. I mean, I have never tried to do <laughs> likable <laughs> cinema. I, I'm more interested in language and space and rhythm and musicality and texture. Th th this is my universe. Yeah. Uh, and Ben, what about you? What 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 did you respond to when you first uh, like read the script and learned about Martin? Um, I think I initially well, first of all, I was such a fan of Ira, so I was extremely excited when I, I, I received the script, <coughs> and then I just was very um, struck by the depiction of a gay relationship. Um, and by a relationship that sort of then attempts to um, absorb a third person into it. I, I, I'm really interested in um, relationships that are not conventional in the way that they generally are, in, you know, and how society likes them to be. Very interested in that. So I, I and uh, I thought that it was very um, kind of. What's the word? Like really um, kind of unjudge unjudgmental in a way, just like looking at it all um, quite sort of evenly, because um, nobody really behaves <laughs> likably. I mean, I was thinking that when we watched it yesterday, like it kind of begins with Adele's character also. But, but she, you know, desire is a selfish thing, isn't it? Like she does what she needs to do. <laughs> And everyone's kind of doing what they need to do. So it's, it's the film is not judging anyone for how they behave. It's, uh, it's just looking. And I really like that. Um, and uh, and how complicated it all is, really. Yeah. Um, I mean, we can't have a conversation about a love triangle without talking about the third party. Um, uh, Ira, can you talk a little bit about, um, I guess, like first, your decision to have a woman be the, the third part of this relationship and so and creating, you know, a god and just casting a doll and all that. Sure. Um, I'm a, I, I'll go back to <laughs> Visconti. Why not? So um, in The Innocent, uh, which I saw when we when Mauricio and I began writing this script, um, uh, Laura Antonelli plays uh, kind of one of the two women in the film. There's a love triangle in that movie. And I... I was really struck by my own, as a gay man, my own feelings of desire for Laura Antonelli. So I think that's where the movie really came from. I was like, wow, desire has been so fixed in my life, and then suddenly it can shift just like in a second. I'm, I'm really so turned on by this person. And, and, I, and so I was interested in that. I think, to be honest, I think this relationship between the two of them is doesn't exactly mirror my more exclusively gay kind of identity. Like, I don't know. I, I think maybe these two guys would use the word queer in a way that, that, that would be different than my experience. Um, so I think the movie shifts because of who I've cast, but I think that was a really initial um, question, which is like desire can shift in a, literally in a second. And I think that's a lot, uh, um, for me in cinema, I'm interested in what how anything can shift in a second. And so that's part of what was exciting for me. Um, I, I had seen Adele, I've never seen Blue as a Warmest Color, I have to admit. Um, but I saw her I in a movie. You haven't either. No, there but we I want to see you. you. Now I really do. Yeah. Um, I, I saw her in a movie called Sybil. And and a French film, and I she had played a small part, and uh, and I saw the movie, and I was literally like, who is that woman? Like I was just so drawn to her, and um, so uh, we when we st were working in Paris, it was an option to work with the French actors, and I immediately went to Adele, and and I think she's like a she's like a she's like at the beginning of something extremely exciting as an actress. I think she's just incredible. Um, she's both. Inc very, very connected to to the world and to the to, to the earth, and she's very human and very knowable. And then she's also has this kind of movie star quality, which is 
quite um, exciting to th within the movie. Like she and 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 we we played that up. Like there was questions in terms of her. Um, she's a school teacher. She's a she's a kind of um, middle class person as compared to this couple who are from an, an upper class. And there is class distinction and 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 questions and power going on there. Um, so, but then we made a decision to to with her wardrobe. Like I was looking at Bridget Bardot, and I was looking at Sandrine Bonaire, and I was looking at, at at ways in which she is elevated in the film, and so that was really actually all very fun for all of us. I think all of them are elevated by costumes in the film. Um, well, Franz and Ben, like this is this is a movie where you know like it's a very like, intensely intimate, almost immediate, you know film so what is the getting to know you process like between the actors on something like this um you just uh, undress <laughs> and <laughs> you get intimate and uh, it's called closed set but all the rest of the crew is sitting behind the monitor and w watching what you're doing so um i think you just have to go for it and and really, it, it sounds weird, but you have to make love to a certain extent. You have to be together in that moment and make the very best of it. And and also, you, I, I, I guess you need uh, to be curious about this intimacy with someone that is actually a stranger to you. I mean, you maybe had a cup of coffee and uh, you get along very well. Or in my case, I've been a huge fan of Ben as an actor. Um, but it, that doesn't really help. I mean, you are a vulnerable, um, sometimes shy person, getting intimate with someone you don't know in front of a camera, and that's just a fact. So I think um, the sooner you accept that reality <laughs> and <laughs> try to have fun with it together, meaning not trying to be perfect or anything that you think you need to be, but it's really like having good sex, like trying not to fake it and trying not to be more than you are, trying to be in the moment and to allow yourself to be vulnerable, I think. Um, so, yeah, I think, yeah. For me, there has also not been a big difference between like making love to a woman or a man in general on set. Because the, <coughs> the hardest thing is the intimacy. It's not uh, the, uh, the the sex, the actual uh, act. Yeah. Uh, ben, can you talk a little bit about maybe like reaching that place of intimacy in in a structured place like a film shoot? Like this, the yeah, sex like finding the vulnerability that you can have with someone else. Um. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think, I think. Um, when you're working with someone like Franz, I mean, you d I think we all know why we're there. We know what the v what the script is asking of us, and there's you d you have to just jump off the cliff. Really, it's like there's no even if you had six months to get to know each other. I don't know whether it would really help that much. <laughs> I mean, you just have to begin and do it and. Um, there's something about that. You mean six months of re sex rehearsal? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe that. <laughs> um, th I d uh, well, I, I wasn't really thinking about the sex scene so much as because I don't think that's necessarily the most vulnerable n or painful. The sex scene can be the least uh, intimate sometimes. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. Some of those conversations are much more. Yeah. Yeah. Difficult. Tumultuous and deep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, well, taking a step back a little bit, um, Ira, can you talk about your decision to set the story in Paris? Sure. Um, you know, I know very few cities in the world, but Paris is one of them that I'm, I, I'm very comfortable and familiar with. I, I first moved there um, as a college student in the 80s, and, and I spent three or four months there, and I knew nobody and didn't speak good French and, and ended up going to the movies two or three times a day and saw 197 movies. and in three months time and it changed my life and and my relationship to to that city and to European cinema and specifically to French cinema has really maintained and sus been sustainable to me um, um, uh, creatively for now 30 years like I 
I, I have a really deep connection to the history of cinema and, and contemporary cinema in France. I also have a lot of friends there, go there often, and felt really comfortable in that city. So I think um, it was kind of a natural fit, and I'm often interested in characters who are sort of out of step, so um, who are not home exactly in their, in their place. So I've, I've had a Vietnamese character in Memphis, and I've had a... Um, a Danish character in New York, and I've often been interested in, and, and that's my life too. My husband's Ecuadorian, my co-writer's Brazilian, my editor is French or, or, or Brazilian. I work with a, a Tunisian French producer. So th this relationship to place and to different identities and different backgrounds is very much mirrors my own life. Um, Paris is also, if you can, find the way, right way to shoot it is an incredibly cinematic city. Um, but I, I really am interested in bedrooms and restaurants and domestic spaces. So ultimately, that's what the movie focuses on, though there is also these moments of, of kind of release where, where the film is in the city. And that was really fun, I think, for all of us. Um, I mean, as an American, like I think of like when I think of Paris, all I think of is like romance. And I'm, I'm just kind of curious for European actors, is that the same for you guys? Um, I think every city has a bit of a tendency to um, uh, what's the word uh, overestimate uh, their, their own value in the world. Uh, I mean, I come from Berlin, and we think we're the coolest. Uh, and we think Paris is dead. Uh, there is no, you know, there is no um, subculture. The, it's way too expensive. All the creative people from Paris, they they move, they leave the city. But if you'd ask another person, you'd hear a totally different story. And we had a great time in Paris. And it's a very beautiful city. And it contains a lot of history. And I think uh, my friends in Berlin are, are wrong. I, um, <laughs> I think it's, uh, yeah, it's one of the most uh, international cities in Europe, and it's, it has a, you can feel the history reaching out uh, um, in many ways. I mean, France had a lot of co colonies, but also it's inviting a lot of um, money from other continents. Uh, it's, a, it's an interesting city, I think. Yeah, I, I, th I think um, it's not so much that the the place is romantic, but I think there's something about French, well, just French people <laughs> and French cinema, and it's sort of um, how how happy it is to folk to make films to focus on relationships uh, and nothing else really. Like they're not they're not um, about great issues. It's just humble kind of complex relationship dramas i think that feel that's i have a very strong connection to that and our, our film feels in that kind of territory which is something that sort of feels more unique these days um, and in particularly maybe in american cinema where where just and i sort of feel like wow that's unique but that used to be really the center of of cinema which is like what people do between each other in intimate domestic ways and, and it's and so I think about people like I mean for me some it's French cinema but also someone like Ozu a Japanese filmmaker who's made like 75 films about like people in their houses and it's so it gives me so much permission because each one is so extraordinary and unique but he basically they're all like people in their houses and that's kind of like a freedom that I think um, I feel um, still still really connected to. I want that freedom to tell the stories about the l how I live intimately with other people. And um, what Ira said about going to the cinema is like twice a day. Uh, Paris, and nowadays it's a bit harder because everybody's struggling and COVID hit and uh, it's a very hard time for cinema and author cinema in general. But, but um, Paris might be the very last city where people really go and watch a movie before they go to work. And, uh, you know, where people really live the life of cinema. And they talk about cinema, they, they go together and watch a movie, and then you don't go home and, 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 and cry, but you 
cry together in a bar and you talk about the movie and I think that's something incredible and um, yeah something unique that makes I think that makes Paris maybe the, the capital of cinema well somehow. We, were, we shot this scene with a bunch of um, like 10, 11 year old kids and we asked them what they did over the weekend is this on? can you guys hear me? is this on? Okay, uh, we asked them what they did over the weekend. It was part of the kind of the, what they had to act. They had to write their their what we did over the weekend. And I would say nine out of ten went to the movies over the weekend, which is really just like okay, that's still happening in Paris. <laughs> so so it's a nice environment um, to make a movie. Um, I already kind of touched uh, touched us on touched on this in the beginning. That part of you know your inspiration for this movie is. Uh, the intimacy that you missed because of lockdowns and the pandemic. And I was wondering, I guess, across the board for all of you, like how did lockdowns and the pandemic kind of change the way you thought about movie making and cinema and, and all of that? That's a good question. Um, I think we're all still not quite sure how the lockdown and that experience, this profound experience we went through as a culture has affected us. And we, I, I find that you, you only notice in a little bit of perspective that you were a part of an extraordinary historic moment. And you, you kind of imagine yourself like, oh, it was really how I felt or my feelings about the people I was close to or, or like, oh, I felt badly there. But then it's like, actually, there was this huge historic event that we were all a part of. And I guess for me, I felt um, I was really, really happy to be able to make another film. Like, I felt in the darkest moments that that part of my life would have was over. Like, I felt there was a, so much death in, in the air, and I felt a death of cinema. And I have to say, this week has been really, really affirming that cinema is still meaningful to people. So I feel curious, I guess, it would be the word of what, what comes next. Um, in Germany, the <coughs> audience for smaller uh, indie productions is rather old, like people from the last century that have experienced the time uh, when cinema was actually like still, you know, a cultural, like a, 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 an event for everybody and not an exclusive circle of people that understand the language, the cinematographical language. And those people, they didn't really know about Netflix accounts and um, movie accounts, and now they do. And uh, it's not necessarily a good thing for the cinema. So I guess that's not not only a German phenomenon, but in Germany, we've lost a lot of o a great audience for for um, independent cinema, and more and more people uh, have lost the uh, capacity to watch something challenging for 90 or 120 minutes and and go through the pain of of I don't know, um, yeah. Uh, trying to understand something that might be that might be hard to read at the beginning or or somehow also a bit painful and um, in Berlin we live in a little bubble where people still uh, still go to the cinemas but if I talk to family and friends in smaller cities I feel like the um, COVID yeah killed like maybe 20% of our indie cinemas in Germany. So it's it's a very uh, challenging moment for us. I, I remember I remember f um, sort of coming out of the experience of um, the pandemic and lockdown feeling like I just wanted to do things I really, really loved and that life was too short and fragile. <laughs> to waste on things that you didn't have anything but total sort of love and uh, devotion to, to. And so, yeah, it really made me want to just um, find those projects. And um, this, this came along. <laughs> so it was like the something was listening. Um, um, yeah, I th it was focusing in that way for me. Um, 
also because there's just there seemed to be suddenly so much stuff and everyone had so much time as you say just to sit <laughs> to sit at home and just watch endless things keep pressing the go button i guess what w i want to just say that one thing you said that the f the form the artistic form of the feature film 90 to 120 minutes is a really specific cultural uh, icon. It, it's a it's a thing that's unique, and it is not the same as uh, as a series in terms of of what goes into it artistically and the shape of it. It's the difference. I don't know anything about classical music, but there's 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 the symphony, and then there's there's the I don't know the cantata or something. These are different forms, and I love the form of the feature film. It's just the one that I. It's just. It's thrilling to me that form, and so I think there's something that it's it's worth preserving if we if for and and I'm it's it's worth trying to make that form. Um, <laughs> I agree too. Yeah. I think that's why we're all here, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, my my understanding is, Ira, your your process does not involve like rehearsals with the actors. So I, I do want to ask Ben and Franz how, how you found that, because I cannot think of something more terrifying than like, no practice, just go. No, I, actually it was amazing. Again, um, it, it, it's not quite, it's not as with, yeah, it's not quite true that there was no rehearsal, because that implies that there was like no thought or something. <laughs> Whereas there's a huge amount of thought and preparation, um, but, um, I do think that you, Ira, you want to fi find something live, don't you? Really, like, it be very al live, alive and live and not too, um, well, and ac open to accidents and unexpected things and, um, and very, and not, not, not acted. Uh, so I think it's a process that um, is conducive to the quality that uh, Ira is seeking in performance so uh, it was great i absolutely loved it and also you know it's great if someone has a way they work it's harder when no <laughs> when someone doesn't have a process and you having to direct yourself um which happens quite a lot um i think actors frequently actually have to direct themselves so i love it when there's a very strong structure that we know what we're doing we're not going to rehearse <laughs> you can give yourself to that i love that person and it can be terrifying in the beginning, but uh, there's something very powerful about you just offering something and putting it on a table, like just go for it. And then your director responding in a positive way and saying, yeah, yeah, that's it. And uh, in, in our last interviews, Ira talked a lot about casting the right people. And I mean, we didn't cast ourselves, but Ira knew what he needed. and we were not sure if we were the right colors, but then once you find out, ah, okay, I am actually the right color, I am proposing the right stuff, it's, it's a great experience, because you can start painting with who you are, and yeah, we got all the nuances inside of us, but the, like the, the there's a first layer of who we are, and if that one, if, if that's the right one, and you get that feedback, it's really a powerful experience to, to not rehearse and not try to be something that you're not, but to start from where you are and who you are. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean that you're not playing a character, but it means that you start from the quality that you already bring with you, and then everything can happen. Well, though, wa watching it yesterday, <laughs> I did. I f I found it. I found it. I think the one of the reasons I felt was so effective was like I felt extremely naked. I felt. I mean, I was actually <laughs> you were very quite naked. literally naked. So I like, but like, um, I felt like, oh my god, that is a part you. I, I felt I you had seen shown something of me that I usually think is hidden. I don't know. And maybe did you feel anything like that? Maybe not. Uh, I did. Yeah. Sometimes it's also irritating. Yeah. Sure. Um, yeah. But yes, I think there's something very intimate. Um, yeah, I'm just enjoying listening to this because it's an interest. It's actually thank you for this opportunity. It, um, uh, this has not been a forum that we've gotten to do yet, and and I'm remembering actually being on these kind of panels with um, John Lithgow and Alfred Molina talking about 
uh, Love is Strange, which is, and just like, it's kind of interesting to have a moment when you're actually able to process this thing that you did um, instinctually together and, and also the intelligence that these people bring to their, their understanding of the experience is, is interesting to me as a, as a director and a filmmaker. Um, you know, I want to say that like, uh, I don't want I don't rehearse in advance. I work, I do read with each actor alone the script and we go through each line and we make sure it makes sense and we talk about things. Um, what I don't want to do is I actually really don't ever talk about subtext. Like subtext is not something I want to literalize because then people play it. So that's very important to me and I think in general with, with, with film you want to, I want to disappear while I want to disappear like a psychoanalyst disappears. I would say is the, it's the only other job I might have been good at. Um, in the sense that I am totally attentive. I, am, I think the actors feel I'm completely, I'm not like, you're on your own, good luck. Um, I'm really, really with them, line by line, word by word, feeling by feeling. I just don't want to speak if it's not necessary. And I don't want to guide. Um, I want them to discover things. And I would say also that uh, uh, the shooting process is a series of rehearsals. I mean, you don't just shoot once. You shoot a scene for a day, so you discover things. You just don't, I think rehearsal in cinema means you start, ca what can happen is you start to literalize certain things and you play those things, and it happens the day before, and so you're trying to remember, what did I do before and how did I get there, which I actually just don't, don't want the actors to be thinking about. I want them to listen and respond in the moment, and we'll, we'll rehearse as we go. Uh -huh. I do want to make sure we have time for our audience questions. Is there anyone in the audience? Questions? I'm sorry, I can't see. You're going to have to raise your hand because the lights are very bright from up here. Can you talk about one of the biggest challenges that you faced in making the movie and how you met that challenge? Sure. Um, well, the biggest challenge is always money. And it's, I think it's actually the biggest challenge in all our lives. It's always money. So, so that the movie got itself together <laughs> financially, that it was possible by the, what do you say, by the hair of it, by the, some, by just, it just barely made it, um, was, was a challenge. And then once you're on the other side of that, it's like a, it's like a, it's a great freedom, <laughs> to be honest. You're suddenly doing something which is only dependent on the, on the fact that you have the money to do it. So I would say that that was a really big challenge for the film. Um, on a, and I would say that's a creative challenge, but I, but I would say, you know, when you don't rehearse, I would say there's always this question if it's going to work. Like you're arriving at a set and you, do, you haven't, and that's always exciting and scary. And I would have to say with these to, and, and the first day was hard. The first day we shot was not our best day, <laughs> I would say. Maybe the first three days. N maybe, well, maybe. Ma it takes a little while. Really. Yeah, it takes a little while. So there is um, usually a panic which happens overnight and then I, usually I call my husband, um, Boris, and he says, you, you, this happens to you every time you shoot a movie. <laughs> Always there is a moment of panic, and then by uh, literally this film, I have to say, it was pretty much for me day two. I was like, ah, I do know what I'm doing, and, and, and I made the right choices, and let's go. So that's a little bit of some answer. Sure. Um, oh, yes, uh, sorry, just, uh, I just wanted to say uh, for, the, for the question before, I'm sorry, uh, just a quick answer. Uh, as, an, as an actor, the biggest challenge is every day, every scene. Like, there's not really... Like a scene that is especially challenging, like it could just be walking over to get a croissant at the bakery, and it seems so simple, and then you end up doing 30 takes, and you think like, what the fuck, well, like, how can I make this work? And then uh, you have very intimate scenes, and they just work first take, but the feeling every day, at least for me, is like, I don't know how it really works, and I've like the more movies I do, the less I really know how it works. And so the biggest challenge is every day, <laughs> every scene. I think. I yeah. just want to say that when I watched the movie yesterday, there's a scene where Franz walks into a bar uh, in the film, and and he meets 
Mark, his uh, Ben's character, and, and some other people, and and I and it was something. It was I really was struck yesterday. Well, like, well, he really did that really really well. He walked into that bar with so much. There's so much going on, and and I think that's what's really um, what makes these are very naturalistic performances by extraordinary actors. Like it's something extraordinary to be able to make walking into a bar have meaning when there's nothing there except walking into a bar. And so I was actually struck by how hard it is to do something simple in a movie. Exactly. That's very meta because that's what Thomas is very concerned about at the beginning of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's right. Uh, two quick questions. One is I, I didn't catch where Ben was from. And the second one is I just wondered as director, what's the worst day for you and what is the best day for you? Good question. Where are you from? Where am I from? Oh me! Yeah. I'm from sorry. I'm from the UK. I'm from London. Yeah, yeah. Me um, too. <laughs> uh, worst day and best day. Um, I think worst day was the first day. I think it was a bad day for me, to be honest. Now that we're talking about it, it I was like, I don't know what. I don't know. I just don't know. So I think that was the worst day on set, and the and the and um, the best day is the last day when it's over. To be honest, every day, it's like Franz says, every day is extraordinary, but it is really, really hard. You just don't know if you're going to be able to get what you need in the time that you have to get it. And it's it takes, an, uh, you know, you have nightmares for at least four to eight weeks afterwards. Every night you're up shooting a movie and you don't know if you're going to be able to do it. So it's really traumatic on some level to be, um, to have, which doesn't mean it's very important in the world, but for you it is in that moment. So um, the last day when um, when everybody's going home and you've, you've done it and nothing terrible happened and you've got what you need is the best day. I had a terrible day, <laughs> the second day, because I had a big speech, like a whole page, and I had to walk across a garden <laughs> and it was really cold and I don't think I could quite understand why I couldn't get it to work I, I couldn't I mean I think we got something quite good sort of eventually but it I just cr and I, was, I went home and was like fuck <laughs> Ira hates me I I was gonna be so shit this is terrible but I uh, I just uh, yeah I've, I was a real day I was like I, d I don't think I got that and I'm sorry, Ira. <laughs> well, I would it's actually. Not in the film. I will say something which I haven't had the chance to say to you is that 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 scene was the problem was in the script. That scene is written from a different movie. It's written in a way that was unactable, which happened to me in Little Men. Also, I wrote a scene that was just unactable, like it was not the language of this movie. I think someone could have done it. Just <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. I one. mean, uh, so and I, I would actually say that for me, because Ben is a an interesting, wonderful fascinating person who is something happens when he starts shooting which is like it's it's like an extraordinary other person arrives and I felt that on day one with you so I didn't feel the panic of the wrong I felt I knew that it was the scene okay. the problem was m it was my fault <laughs> no but I also think watching it I, it, it would have been very odd actually that scene of course because it was, no it, one it spoke at that length even that was unusual in the yeah. that scene had a lot of past that scene was describing things was trying to understand things in a way that the movie doesn't it's not the movie is an, is a very present True. scene so it's it um it needed to be excised and it was so interesting uh, starting a movie is always like this no you you don't know what it's going to be you've been preparing for yeah, if you're an actor, maybe for two months, but if you're a director for a year or a couple of years, and and then it will definitely not be what you uh, maybe thought it might be. It will be something new. And um, thank you for being so polite, because I, I couldn't tell that the first day was the worst day <laughs> for you. Uh, but I was definitely also struggling, because uh, it's, it's always uh, very, yeah, very... It's just too much. Like everybody knew, you don't know anybody. Yeah. You don't even know who you are as a character because you right. haven't made a single step. And like, it's yeah. So it's it's like um, giving birth to an 
unborn child that is but uh, but it's uh, but it it, need, it needs to like you have to get it out <laughs> it's already the tenth month yes and i think i think what I, one thing I learned making this movie is is directing movies is not about um lines it's about action it's always about action and i i think um and somehow i think that first the scene that we shot in the first day we were playing lines and there wasn't quite enough we didn't know what the actions True. W between you all were and the lines were getting in our way yeah. in certain ways so it's what was it was it us in the in bed bed in the and but then we did the rolling around ah rolling around yes i remember but it was it was actually the part where you're in the middle of the night when the middle of the night it was the middle of the night that was scene. the tricky one yeah. and um, so it worked out that scene is in the movie and it's really good and they're so good in it so. we have another we have question sorry we're just chatting away <laughs> we're like oh, <laughs> so we, we've lost consciousness uh, okay sorry hi this question's for Ira so I love how introspective you are about your writing and you mentioned um, not giving the actors subtext. But I had a question about how you write in the character development, just because screenwriting is so different than like novels where you get so much more information and background. Without giving the subtext, how do you get your characters to develop to where you need them to? How do you give the actors the information to get to that end point? There's someone missing right here who is my co-writer, Mauricio Zacharias. Um, uh, who we have a we've now made five films together, and um, we have a process which is, um, which I I wish he, he was here to answer that question because part of our process is we spend three to six to eight months to a year coming up with an outline, scene by scene description of what we're doing. We 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 figure out the movie together, and and I feel I'm very in, instrumental in that part. And then he goes away for six months and writes the first draft, and and then I usually. Sometimes I write the third draft. Sometimes he writes. So you know, we have a process of back and forth, and eventually it's my movie, and he goes away, and I get to do whatever I want with it. But the, I think it's about um, um, a. It's really important to know what's happening in the film, like what's at stake in every scene, and 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 in a way, that's more. That is the action. That is the that is the question of the scene. So the dialogue, um, in, in a way, is just part of the fabric of what happens between the two people in an abstract emotional way. Um, during a scene. Um, and I think I have a, you know, I'm always like trying to figure out if I've ever pointed to anything in, in the dialogue or then I need to remove that. I never want to, to, to point, if that makes sense. I always want it to be exposed because of um, kind of something that cannot be stated in a simple fashion. Um, so you want to create an environment in which there's there's nothing can be r reduced to one thing and not its opposite. So I don't know if that makes any sense. Thank you very much for this. Um, friends, I really appreciated what you said before about gestation and uh, arriving to the end point of a project, not exactly knowing what is going to result. I found in working on personal projects that I come to a place not where I reach an answer about a project, but a question is clarified, what I was asking. And I just was curious from each of you if there's an insight or about your theme of intimacy that you didn't have at the beginning of the project, that some, some something that you glimpsed by the end. Um. There was a lot of noise in the background, and I have a poor hearing. But if, if I understood correctly, you said um, maybe what you um, get from a from a process in the end is not an answer, but a question. And if we have such a question after that project, something that a new question that arose, right? Um, I don't know, my, uh, my own learning process is very weird and I, I would love to be more in charge, but <coughs> I'm trying to hammer information in my brain all day and it, it just doesn't work and it's a very slow and weird creature, my brain or my learning process and I don't, I wish I'd had a great answer, but I feel like I'm just repeating my concepts of life and the more I do so, the more I'm failing. And, and um, 
that's a good thing because I can let go certain concepts of strength or certain concepts of or ideas of who I am and I know that this project has felt good and I know that I've been surrounded by people that I um, find inspiring to work with and I think that their their energy or their pace or yeah their perspective on life is something that changed me in a way but it's it's hard for me to formulate a, a new question because my question every day is how to survive this day <laughs> how you know how to find something that is meaningful but it, it like literally like I'm, I'm, I'm today I'm sitting in my room and I know that there's a great festival and there's lots of things lots of things to watch but the truth is I'm just depressed laying on bed and, and I, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing <laughs> and um, and being surrounded by people that you that you find inspiring is that's really that's the, the greatest thing that can happen and and I feel more like this makes this allows me to keep on living and moving and and and, and it keeps changing me the me that I can feel but yeah I also wonder what is the new question <laughs> I don't I don't know Ben um, I think I, I this I don't know whether this is a really an, a good answer but I I um I feel um I really loved the um I loved the discussion within the film but also our discussions as people about relationships and how to do them and how yeah just how really difficult they are I I just I I just and so I feel I felt I felt very nourished by having that conversation uh, as a piece of drama and also just humanly and um I did somehow I have somehow felt that I could take that into my life uh, um in some way yeah um I I would say what what I I don't I don't know if it's an answer to the question I I did feel when I made this film and when we shot this film that I was like I'm 57 so I'm I'm old um but I felt like I was starting something new for myself um and I think that had to do with a kind of I felt very comfortable with myself and with my instincts as an artist and as a and as a creative person and with this group of people and I felt like that comfort drew me back to when I was younger like to certain instincts that I had when I was 25 and 30 and just started making movies that that I felt like somehow I, I I kept walking away from in my life and this movie was a return to something that was very <coughs> essential to how I look at life and the world <coughs> excuse me but um, but I was doing it as an older man and that felt exciting because I had different skills and different abilities so I think the question of uh, the question is maybe what can I do next okay well <laughs> uh, well, thank you, everybody, and thank you to the audience for being here. Um, I'd like to uh, really quick ask you all to please stay in your seats while everyone leaves, but also give a round of applause to our panelists. Thank you. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you. Thank you.